Sorry. Okay, which microphone am I talking into? Into, into the computer, the into yeah. the laptop. Okay, okay. Um, this is, um, in a sense, quite a quite a nice follow on from what Barbara was um, was talking about. Barbara was really focusing on, you know, one of the fundamental issues, which is in scientific data sets, you've got columns. And somehow you've got to describe, you know, what that column of numbers is actually describing, um, and what she. Yes, we're not sharing the screen. Yeah, uh, yeah. Keep, keep going. <laughs> uh, well, and she was describing, uh, uh, saying that they've they've attempted to, to develop a model to sort of um, break out into its components or into it into its pieces what a particular number would describe, and of course one of those. He's still finding me. <laughs> Here we are. Okay. Um, one of the key bits of um, the description of a column in a set of data very often is the unit of measure by which the number that you see in a column is scaled. Um, and it's, you know, you'd think I've been barking on about this for, for 10 or more years now already, you would think this would be a solved problem. Units of measure, almost the simplest part of the puzzle compared with biology and chemistry and, and all of those things. But, um, you know, because it's so simple, perhaps it's actually um, remains a relatively um, uh, um, uh, unresolved um, issue and you know basically we have this situation where everyone who's developing a project to um, collect some particularly quantitative data you know they almost always start out with building a list of the units of measure which they're going to be using for their data um, and um, the codes that occur in that list of units of measure are not necessarily consistent. Not all um, people using units of measure, um, you know, know about uppercase and lowercase and whether to use a slash or quotes or, um, you know, the traditional units of measure are typeset in beautiful ways with italics and Greek letters and all of those kinds of things. Um, and I'll show you uh, one very bizarre one, um, which is very, very widely used, which where the units of measure don't resemble anything you've ever seen. Um, so, um, you know, one of the biggest problems is that a lot of data is thrown away um, with a rather tenuous connection to the metadata about what the numbers in the columns and the tables mean. Um, and, you know, one of the tenuous connections is what, what are the units of measure here? Um, uh, well, what is actually the scale for this number here? Um, and then there's a kind of a social problem here, which is who is who is it who runs units of measure? Well, there's a whole community out there called metrologists um, who worry about the ninth decimal place in the uh, conversion factors between units of measure, or what the absolute definitions are. Um, in some um, applications, that ninth decimal place really does matter. Um, most of the time it doesn't. Um, it'd be better if we at least knew within maybe two decimal places what the the uh, the units of measure is that we're doing. But the metrologists, of course, they own this space, but they're actually pretty shit at, 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 at telling people what it is they're talking about in a way that makes them, it, it easy to reuse. So, um, you know, and here's the sort of prime example, the organization that manages the, the International System of Units, the SI, here's the Bureau of International Weights and Measures, uh, based in Paris, and you go and look up to find the definitions of weights of, of uh, units of measure there, and what do you get? You get web pages and PDFs, okay, and the web pages and PDFs have got beautifully typeset and all of that, but there's no link to the definitions of individual units of measure that you can get back a description in a way that you can use in an application, in a digital application. So this is, you know, the, my point four there. The metrologists know what they're doing, but they don't know how to tell users um, how, how to make sense of it. There's a few projects out there which have claimed or had a go at doing a general solution to units of measure. Um, one of the key ones being, uh, one, one of the, the most successful ones, I think, is this thing called QUDT, quantities, units, dimensions, and types. Um, it, it's it's a, quite a nice technical solution. There's a URI per unit of measure 
however they are um, uh, cached statically so if you come up with a unit of measure that isn't in their list then you've got to go through a process of getting it added to their list can take as little as a week but it's not you know the next minute um so they have um, i hope you can read there the, the these are um compact uris that unit colon stands for an http blah 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 thing but the name of the unit of measure is something that's kind of parsable um to a human they've got they're actually they have a fairly strict rule for how to do this so it's pretty predictable what you're getting out um and they've got a whole bunch of interesting uh, uh, um, uh, uh units of measure in there currently um, nearly 2,000 instances of units of measure, which is why this is one of the best ones out there, um, including things like ACRE and um, uh, Australian dollar is in there. At some stage early in their piece, they decided they were going to do units of currency, and I think that was a bad idea, and I've told them that. Um, but um, so there's not a lot of attention paid to that, but, but, but you know, they do have quite a, a big set. Um, what do you get if you request one of these descriptions of a unit of measure? Um, I'm showing you there um, the description of cubic inch per minute um, in represented as a, a, in JSON, which anyone who's a, a web developer these days would at least be able to uh, parse that into a data structure. And you can more or less read the kind of information they've got there. Line four there is the conversion multiplier to convert cubic inches per minute into the SI unit for that quantity type, which of course would be cubic meters per second. Um, everyone knew that, right? Um, but you can see a whole bunch of other information in there, which is quite useful in being able to use this and make sense of it. There's a, um, a, a dimension vector I'll draw your attention to, which is which basically is classic sort of dimensional analysis. Uh, cubic inches per minute is got is length to the power of three and time to the power of minus one in that in that um, uh, identifier there for the dimension vector. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff, including down the bottom there, just your attention to a set of codes using the UCOM system, which I'll talk about a little bit um, later. So. Um, in our science space, oh, I'm sorry, that that project was uh, originally de developed at a project that was funded by NASA, but is now a kind of standalone project. And that's one of the weaknesses of it, which is they're essentially depending on um, uh, um, trying to get funding to support their system from um, subscribers. Um, um, and uh, and the people who are running it are all um, retired or semi-retired people of my vintage or older um, who know what they're doing, but what happens if any of those falls off the perch? Um, so this is um, uh, another significant system which is widely used in one of the communities which I think is represented in this room, which is the oceanography community, the NERC vocabulary service based out of British Oceanographic Data Centre. Um, they've got a whole set of um, controlled vocabularies online in their NERC vocabulary services, several hundred. Um, this one is their units of measure, and there's um, a, a couple of hundred units of measure in here. Um, the URIs um, or the codes for them in the ID column over the left there, some of them make sense, some of them you can't um, uh, understand, you know, what unit it's referring to, you'd have to look it up, but but still it's, you know, a reasonably good um, system. And if you dereference one of the those uh, those definitions, here's an example, femtomoles per litre, you get a web page for that. Um, and you can also download a, a, um, a machine readable version. Again, I'm showing you the JSON uh, representation of that. There's less information in this than there is in the QUDT definitions for the same things. In most cases, there's actually a link across to the QUDT ones so that you can cross-reference. There's already an existing community that's expecting to use the P06 codes, but there is the mapping across to the QDT ones. I'm not sure if I chose one of these here, um, but for most of them, there is. So um, it doesn't have the um, uh, conversion factors built in um, here, for example. Um, so, so there's a, a limited, it's just a pure, almost a pure SCOS um, representation. Um, here's an incredibly important 
the list of units of measure um, put out by the um, UN CFACT, which is basically units of measure for um, for trade matters. This is um, you know what what is used for commerce in the world, um, and um, you know I was saying before there's some odd codes um, used. That those are the codes for the units of measure in the UNECE system, and you'll see some of them kind of make sense, like the decimeter and centimeter. But who would have known that E96 is degrees per second? Um, so. Um, you know, you, you have to look them up, you have to know them, they are used very, very widely in, in, in the, um, for standardization and commerce. There's some beautiful concepts in their um, systems here, um, you know, 40 foot container, tank truck, um, catch shot, a mili a stick military, there you go. Um, so, you know, the, the, the range of things that need units of measure is, um, is pretty beautiful. Um, I mentioned earlier UCOM. Um, UCOM is a system that was originally developed in clinical um, uh, for clinical health applications. is still basically owned by that community. Um, the big advantage of UCOM is that you can type it on a keyboard um, without using the shift key. Actually, you may have to use the shift key to get some of the parentheses, but it's 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 you know it's basically no funny characters. It's seven bit ASCII. Um, the, it defines an algorithm to, to uh, it has a set of, of a, a, um, atomic codes, and then there's an algorithm to how to com combine them. The combinations look like the codes that you know and love. So they look like, you know, M slash S for meters per second. And um, um, here's a bunch of examples of the slightly weird, weird, well, some of the weird ones, you know, per kilogram is slash kg. Um, these are ones which are anyone who's got a, a scientific background would probably be able to guess. Um, you can um, also, um, there is some quite nice tooling that comes along with it, including a, a validator and a converter. So here's a little um, uh, web app um, that, um, so I, I put in one um, uh, inch of mercury as a measure of pressure. Um, and you can convert it to hectopascals, which is another um, unit of measure for pressure. A bang, there it is. One um, inch of mercury is equivalent to 33 and a, we're nearly 34 hectopascals. Um, you know, perhaps a slightly more, um, well, and, and there's some pretty weird ones in there. So here's um, uh, yard acres, um, which would be a, a, a a measure of volume, as you can see, 56 yard acres would be uh, 207,000 cubic meters. Um, so that's, uh, but it's all based on just those little codes. And I showed this one particularly to, to indicate, um, you know, that as well as all the standard SI ones, which are the ones you expect, the so-called conventional units, the ones which are used in you know, for historical or cultural purposes, have all got square, bra square brackets around them, but otherwise kind of makes sense. Um, so um, given the existence of a few of these different systems here, there's been um, a team actually uh, associated with the Obo Foundry um, ontology system who put together a little tool um, uh, at unitsofmeasurement.org, um, which basically looks up those mappings for you. Um, so here's an example if you, uh, and it uses the UCOM codes as the keys. So you type in the UCOM code and it, it's, it's, it shows you um, what the equivalent would be in the, in NVS and P06, in QUDT, and in a couple of other systems as well. Um, so there, there, there is a, a, an online mapping tool already available. Um, so this is, you know, Partly a mess and partly good news, I think. There are some systems which are there. Not everybody knows about them. Everybody's using them. Um, and you know, recognizing it as, a, as an issue, Codata established a task group on um, trying to calm down this, um, uh, these, these troubled waters um, a few years ago. Um, the task group was initiated in 2018. I'm on it. Um, and um, it's uh, basically trying to come up with some, some uh, systems recommendations um, in order to sort of bring some order to this chaos. Um, 
one of the things we have to recognize and we have to accept is there will never just be one system. Um, there are there's a lot of history here communities have got their own needs they've got their own systems which are built around some of these existing um, uh, services and systems um, getting everyone to throw them away in favor of you know the perfect system ain't going to happen but if more of the you know new uh, projects and new groups were aware that these existing systems were available maybe they wouldn't have to do their own um or, or would realize they don't have to do their own um and um the co the the drum uh digital representation of units of measure um uh, group has um put out uh we had a paper in nature um, earlier this year um i think my paper with my biggest number of co-authors 17 co-authors on that some of whom i'm not actually sure what they did but it was important to have them as listed as co-authors when you're making a pitch for um for some kind of uh, uh social change um but basically the appeal is um you know if we don't resolve this problem then we, we we've got a risk of um having data sets out there which are not going to be as usable as they should be um in the future um, and in particular, there's a liaison now for, um, with the, this is the parent body of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, the sort of um, the board, CIPM, which has a task group on the digital SI. Um, uh, I've had a little bit to do with Fat Stu Chalk, who I think is talking next, is going, is, I think is, 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 is on this, um, uh, this committee. Um, it's interesting. I briefed them, or I briefed one of their um, uh, um, um, sort of sister committees in 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 CIPM um, uh, a few weeks ago on the existing sort of um, uh, state of the art there. And believe it or not, there is still argument about what the word quantity and quantity value and quantity kind and unit actually mean. Um, so, you know, most of us would recognize that the, this is the, the basic um, information model which QUDT um, uses, and most of us would be able to make sense of this, particularly if you've shown an example like this, which says, okay, this mass is a quantity kind mass, um, uh, 1.54 kilograms, that's an example of an individual mass. So you need basically to understand all three of those bits of information in order for that number to make sense. It's a mass, it's it's in kilograms, and the value is 1.54. Um, uh, I, actually, I should skip this slide, sorry. So I'm just going to wrap up by saying... Um, I think what I've tried to show is there are some good units of measurement lists that are in existence. Um, some of them um, are provided with you know, um, on request, you know, in, in real time machine readable representations with the conversion factors. Um, there are tools and crosswalks available for some of them. Um, and the CIPM is liaising now with the Digerati, um, partly facilitated by Codata through the um, through the drum project. So I'll finish there. <laughs>